Hi, today is the 10th of July and we're bringing to you historical facts that took place today. Today in 1962, Telstar, the world's first communication satellite, is launched into orbit. History is about to be made in the science of communication among men. Technicians in Europe prepare to receive a signal from the orbiting Telstar satellite that opens this new era. And in 1971, Nigeria became the 11th member of Organization of the Petroleum Exporting Countries, OPEC. The Organization of the Petroleum Exporting Countries, OPEC, was founded in Baghdad, Iraq, with the signing of an agreement in September 1960 by five countries, namely the Islamic Republic of Iran, Iraq, Kuwait, Saudi Arabia, and Venezuela. They were to become the founder members of the organization. In 1976, four missionaries, one American and three British, are executed in Angola following the Luanda trial. Angolan people, I want an Angolan man. That's the end. In 1981, Boris Yeltsin takes office as the first elected president of Russia. The elected president of Russia was soon striding out of the building to address a crowd of supporters. His own radio and television stations by now occupied and forced off the air, he climbed aboard one of the Red Army's own tanks and said the coup leaders had disgraced the Soviet Union. And in 1964, Moa Sakapenda, shown the leader of the Confederation of the Tribal Association of Katenga, became the Prime Minister of the Congo, now known as Democratic Republic of Congo. In 1993, Kenyan runner Yubes Ondiki surprised the world when he became the first man to run 10,000 meters in less than 27 minutes. Ondiki was taking part in the Bislet Games in Oslo, Norway when he made history. This achievement saw him ranked number one in the world in 10,000 meters. The clock ticks on! Will he make it under 27? He's going to be so close! He has 26 minutes and 58 seconds! In 1997, in London, scientists report the findings of a DNA analysis of a Neanderthal skeleton, which supports the art of Africa theory of human evolution, placing an African ape at 100,000 to 200,000 years ago. In 1998, an application to the Pretoria Supreme Court to declare the freedom of choice to terminate pregnancy law unconstitutional failed. Note that on these days, South Africa liberal abortion law was challenged in court by three Christian groups, the United Christian Action Group, the Christian Lawyers Association, and Christians for Truth, who asked the Pretoria High Court to set aside the Choice and Termination of Pregnancy Act, arguing that a fetus has a right to life. The court action was opposed by the Minister of Health, Dr. Nkosuzana Zuma, together with the Reproductive Rights Alliance and the Commission on Gender Equality, a statutory body created by the Constitution. The three groups' application against the law failed on this day, in 1998. And in 1999, five students of the Obafemi Awolowo University, Ileife, were gruesomely murdered by the members of the Black Axe Confraternity, while some others were left injured. Among those killed was a 21-year-old 400-level law student and the Secretary General of the Students' Union, George E. Willade, popularly referred to as Africa. Others were a Vienno Ekumi, 400-level medicine, Yemi Ajeturi, an extra-year student, Babatunde Oke, 100-level philosophy, and Goffrey Ekwede. In 2000, in the villages of Adeje and Kuviri Court in Nanja Delta, over 100 people were burned to death after a damaged gasoline pipe exploded. And in 2008, UN Special Envoy Ibrahim Gambari resigned as chairman of a planned peace summit for the oil-rich Niger Delta following opposition leader. However, we do not call it a wrap until we present to you some of the international observance for today. And today is noted as the International Thank Royals Day. While this may come as a surprising news to many, International Tank Warriors Day, which falls on July 10th this year, is indeed a thing. It is celebrated on the second Monday of every year. Confused about what exactly Tank Warrior is? I would agree the term itself is one that has been passed into posterity, much like the job itself. A Tank Warrior, also known as a bellman, was basically an officer of a royal court or public authority whose job was to grab everyone's attention in the street in order to make official proclamations or announcements to the general public. Now you know what a Tank Warrior means. Did you ever get to meet one or hear one while growing up? What do you generally think about them? Let us know on the comment section below. It's a competition about production from your voice. 
it's, it's nothing to do with your costume, flamboyancy. It's about volume, diction, literation, pronunciation, highs and lows. And that is what is, perhaps I could say, pure about this particular competition. Global Energy Independence Day is celebrated every year on this day. It aims to raise awareness about the importance of alternative fuels. We are currently using fossil fuels as our sources and the need replacing. Fossil fuels are non-renewable and require a very long time, sometimes millions of years to form. They are also a source of pollution. Therefore, on this day, we raise awareness against fossil fuels and focus on finding alternative sources that, that are renewable and relatively non-polluting sources of energy. Michael De Antovich, a member of the LA County Board of Supervisors, started this day in 2006. The choice is clear and the time to act is now. This Energy Independence Day, we ask you to choose wisely. We ask you to choose renewable. And finally, today is the 191 of 365. We are still 174 days away from celebrating the new year. Until then, just know you're right on time. You're not too late and you're not too early. Note that 8 billion people cannot be running in the same pace. While you wait, don't lazy on it. Keep working and don't give up. My name is Ngozi and you're watching Adamazo TV.